Hey, this is John Vinch Fisherman. Another ambassador. Hey, this is a wanted at auction. It's beat up. It ain't pretty, but it's red and I like it. It's um, I got a thing for red reels and green reels. Don't know what it is, but it's a uh, 35th anniversary edition. 5,000. Made in Sweden. High speed retrieve. Limited edition. It says it right there. I ain't lying. 35th anniversary. So, with that said, it does not have anti instant anti reverse. It is work. It is functioning. It doesn't have a bait clicker, so we don't need to check that. Um, with that said, let's let's take it apart. Somebody really had those things cranked down. Okay, not going to hurt them. Huh. Been recently old. So this one's got the weights still on it and they're set to fly out. You can turn, you can slide those weights in to lock in. So if you're casting uh, really light stuff, you know, the BFS thing's the newest craze, right? With bait casters. You can slide these weights all the way in. One or two, depending on how, how much weight you're throwing. And you won't have a centrifugal force of those uh those fly weights working against you. So this thing is a, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. It's a 1984. So it's March, March of 84. I think I'm right about this. It's got 87-88 on it. Okay. I don't know. I, I I have a hard time reading some of these serial numbers. I'll find out the story on it. I'll get back to you. Uh, I've got a chart somewhere, but it's on my phone, which is recording me right now. So we're, we're not going to get into that. Two different screws here on the side. One's a Phillips and two are straight. So what's up with that? at some point somebody lost the screw and had to replace it it's gonna be a really simple reel because there is no there is no bait clicker on this side of the deal with. had this reel for a while probably about four months just love these old things A real thing for these ambassadors. I like the left hander. I use the left handers. I collect the left handers. But uh, I like the I like any of them really. So this one has a snap ring. We're gonna, somebody's kept it pretty well lubricated. Not the lies. Whoever whoever owned this reel before me. Definitely uh, took good care of it. There's a bushing in there, and the best way to get it out is to take take your spool and kind of lock it back and forth, rock it back and forth, not lock it. May not come out. Don't bend the don't bend the shaft on the spool. Just kind of keep working it back and forth, and it will eventually it will eventually pop that. That's ah, coming. Oh, 
All right, we got it now. It's out far enough I can get a little bit of a grip on it. There it is. There's the bushing. There are shims underneath there. We're going to clean all that up good. I learned my lesson every time on this. Take you a sharp exacto knife and just kind of pop them up. That's that. That'll clean up nicely. Okay. Well, there's three shims underneath there. Okay. Now on your uh, level line, take your retainer. I always slide it all the way over to the side and then take the screwdriver and take the cap. This reel was over greased on this palm side. You don't need that much over here. See that that was over greased that's over greased there's all those parts you can flip this plate up maybe not on this one i'll leave it alone because i don't want to mess that's the biggest that's the greatest thing about the reel so i don't want to mess that up okay we're good there Let's take the business end apart here. You got the retainer on, on this uh, handle. Comes off. Retaining nut. You got this. You got snap ring. Take that off, E clip, I guess you call it. it's not really a snap ring. Then your handle can come off. The handle's in good shape, it's not bent or anything. Back, oops, the cap came off. That wasn't on there good. Back pedal your drag. Get into that in just a second. So your cap has shims in it. I think there's probably just one that needs to be cleaned up good. I just see one in there. You've got a bushing. We'll get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and take these two screws off. Okay, let's do the bushing. Oh, yeah. okay, we'll come back to that. Um, things slip apart easily. You got a keeper ring on there. Make sure you keep your fingers there. It will fly. Then your bushing just slides out. Your bushing just slides out. I like when things don't want to cooperate when I say, oh, it just does this. There you go. So all this fell out. It's your prototypical setup, okay? I don't do a whole lot with any of this, but I'll show you what I do to it. First thing off is the anti-reverse dog. And you've got the plastic handle pushing. This was actually together wrong. It was supposed to go get the shim and then the plate, then the concave. This one's going to have more of your normal drag setup on it. You got a press plate. Let's see this stuff out of the way. Got two drag washers. What in the devil is that? Look at that drag washer. 
That's not right. So we're going to find some drag washers for it. I'm sure I've got some. What in the devil did they do to this reel? All right. That wasn't right. There's two drag washers. And there's your gear. Nothing else to take apart. That's that's it. Over here on this side to get the pinion gear out, get the spool release, and that will just come out. You don't need to take that plastic retainer off. And then you can clean all this up. There is a shim on the handle on the main shaft, drive shaft, whatever you want to call it. There's a shim down there. Don't don't lose that. And what I'll do is because this has got a lot of a lot of oil and stuff on it. I'm going to go through and clean it up as best I can. And then let the, the ultrasonic do the rest. You can take this, this plate here off. I don't see any point in it. We're good just the way we are. So far, not in bad shape. We'll wipe some of this excess grease off before I put it in the in the ultrasonic. It was it was lubed. I wouldn't say it was done the way I would do it. It was done better than none. Somebody loved this reel. I can tell you that right now. Somebody absolutely loved it. They they fished with it. They kept it lubricated. They probably caught a lot of fish on it. That's cool. That's what we're that's what that's what it's all about. It's not about sitting here at a desk working on them. It's about getting out there and fishing with them, which I don't do enough of here lately. What I'm doing is just getting all this excess grease out so when I put it in the ultrasonic, it'll just clean up what I can't get to. A big chunk of grease right there. Yeah. Big chunks of grease. I appreciate whoever took care of it though. It's a nice reel. Nice, nice reel. Okay, I'm gonna clean it up and I will be back. And uh man, this thing's gonna it's gonna be pretty. It'll be real pretty. Be back. Hello, I'm back. Uh this 35th anniversary edition ambassador. Um It's nice. It's in good shape. Let's put it all back together. We'll start out with, okay, number one, I had to replace the drag on it. Um, I don't know what kind of atrocities happened to this. <laughs> I've never seen a drag look like that. But I'm putting some carbon tex in it. Um, these, these, are, these are trash. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Here's the drags. It's set 053B. So this is for the um, 1988 through 1989 bait casters. So that's what this this reel is. It was made in 1987, but it's actually a, an 88 to whatever. That, that's beside the point. Let's put this thing back together. The biggest problem I found with this reel is this cake full of grease in the area you don't want a lot of grease. The level line is the last place you want to cake them full of grease. And this one, this one was really, it was really caked full. So we're going to we'll put it together the way it's supposed to be put together. 
that level line has to slide freely. And because it the level line when you cast these reels, the ambassadors, the level line moves back and forth to pay the line out. And if you don't, if you if you use a heavy grease in there, it won't move fast enough. Therefore, you don't cast far enough. I mean, yeah, if you if your type of person has problem casting and you know you don't want to backlash, you're not good with your thumb. Well, I guess it works for you, but. I, I don't like to slow my cast down as much as this one was probably slowed down due to the grease. And so we're going to make it a lot quicker and it's going to be a, a lot better reel when we get done with it. Uh, there again, when you put that level line pole in there, just kind of crank it around and it will, it will find its way to where it needs to be. Oil and good fast oil like this dad's old tackle TSI 321. That's some darn good oil. Little dab of grease with the threads are on this cap. You're going to see this reel is going to be smooth and fast. Caps fighting me just a little bit there. I'm kind of pushed on time today, so I'm trying to get a couple of reels done. And I got to get some work done on the house before the home inspection this week. Sold a house, you know where I'm talking about. All right, so that is slicking that right on up. Okay. Look at that. Just like that. No bearings in that. It's just bushings. But man, I sped it up fast, didn't I? All right. We got three of the shims in here. We're going to put them in one at a time. I put them in. A little drop of oil. Put one in. A little drop of oil. Put one in. Another drop of oil in your bushing. Bushing's got a tab on it that lines up that groove cut in the housing. There's no retainer on it. Fill it full of oil. Good stuff. Good oil. Don't only use the cheap stuff. Use the good oil. Pull that shaft. Put your hog gear on there and your e clip. You can put a little dab of oil on the teeth. This, look how fast that's spinning. Okay, and then we're ready to put the palm plate on. Like that. Three screws. This one had one oddball screw to it. But at some point somebody had changed out screw. I guess they were they had it apart and lost the damn screw to it. I don't know. The red anodizing, powder coating, whatever it is, has some rope, uh, boat rash or dock rash on it. That's okay. It's the 35th anniversary edition reel, so it's got a little bit of significance. I wouldn't say a lot. Got some, you know, rash there where the sticker's missing. Let's build the gear side now. I've already sprayed the 
the brake plate down with ballastol so everything is good and slick. Push this in. Grease up where the pinion goes. We'll go grease the pinion good. You don't want any grease down in the hole of the pinion, just on the gear of the pinion. And it's got that little horseshoe looking bushing, plastic bushing goes towards the thumb release. Sometimes you gotta fight it a little bit. You can swing it out here if you want to. Swing it back in. Okay, now that's in there. Shim that goes on. Your anti-reverse dog got two little ears. One of them's bent a little bit. Let's give it a little bit back there. You don't want to put any oil or grease on this plate where this anti-reverse dog rides. You want it to. You want just kind of you want friction to to be able to do its job there. So. You do want to oil the shaft. And the hole on the gear, put it all there. Line into reverse dog up that post. If you spin this without the cover plate on it, it it's going to fly out, and you got to go reset again. So just kind of leave leave well enough alone there for a second or two. All right, drag. You don't have to use cow's grease on these car carbon techs, but I do. I use it on everything I build. Goes the, the ring washer goes towards the, the brake plate. We'll go ahead and put some grease on that gear. It'll work itself in, so just give it a little coating around it go ahead and put your gear on there all right your last drag washer give it some towels I just kind of dip it in, get a little bit on it, smear it around. It doesn't matter which way the drag washer goes, it's going to work the same either way. See how much better that one fit than what they had on there? I don't know what they had on with that. I wouldn't build one like that, that's just me. Press plate. Concave washer, looks like a taco. Then you got a regular round washer, flat. And then it gets the shim. And then the black spacer, handle spacer. Whoops. That wasn't so smart, was it? On there. Okay, there we go. All right. Over here, you got a bushing. Got the little tab on it, it goes in that little groove, slides in there. You do have a retainer. Hang on to this thing. It goes flying. Good luck finding one. It goes on there like that. You cap. Put your shim in there. We'll dab all. I always give this a little grease. It's good for that O-ring right there. The O-ring is there to seal it. 
and to give you some tension on that knob. Once you get in there a certain distance, it engages that O-ring and it keeps that knob from spinning on you so you don't mess up your uh, precast setting on it. A little bit of grease in these two holes. The cover screws go on. You can go ahead and put the cover on it. And this style here that you'll, you'll find a little bit of uh, spring tension. Okay. Then you get your two screws. We'll use a Harbor Freight precision screwdriver. You don't have to kill the torque on these things. It's not seating right. Okay, what is going on here? Okay, taking it back apart, folks. Hang on. Something did not pop into place. Ah, there it went. Ow. Okay, got it. Your handle, really not much to it. We're about done with this thing. A little bit of grease. Thread your drag on. This is a right hand reel, so we're right hand threads. It wants me to make it's, it's trying to make me hold my mouth just right today. That's an old saying, folks. All right. Got that. Put your handle on. Snap ring. Don't forget the snap ring. That's what retains the handle. It clicks in all the way. Handle retaining nut on. You'll point the. You'll put one of the points of the screw of the of the handle retaining nut or a flat towards that. It should line up just right, just like it did towards that hole there. Okay. I've already oiled the paddles. I did that when I first cleaned it. Next step is to line the. We're going. We're going to oil. Shaft, a little oil on that bearing, a little oil on that shaft. We'll go ahead and line it up with this side of the reel, the drive side. And we'll make sure those weights slid in a little catch, just like that one did there. Push them back in there. All right. A little grease on those here.
And we got something acting silly here. We get you want to get that spool tension set where it's got some side to slide, side to side motion on the spool. Got the drag set. Always, whenever you put a drag in, hold the spool, crank into it, crank it down a little bit, slip that drag some, set it in there. It'll get all nice and tight. Get the drag stack tight. It'll free the reel up. Okay, let's see how it spins. Not very good with that much oil on it. Like Got so much oil and grease on it, I can't get my thumb to turn it very good. There you go. That's not bad. That's a bushing reel. There's no bearings in that. Look at that. If I had a little line on there, like some 12 pound line, with all the inertia from the weight of the line, it would really be spinning good. That's, that's a nice reel. I'm happy with that. It's going on my shelf. 35th anniversary edition. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Special edition, 35th anniversary. Hey, is it worth anything? Probably not. I like it, though. This is John Vinge Fisherman. Uh, welcome back to the Abby Garcia Ambassador Channel. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I, I like all reels, but I really love the ambassadors. I, I love pin reels. I got a thing for squitters. I got a thing for jig masters. I love internationals. But... And these ambassadors, they're just so cool. So many upgrades you can do to them. I literally could take that reel there and, and turn into a BFS reel. No problem at all. It would fish so good. You can put bearings in where those bushings were. I started to do that. And I thought, no, nah, it's just going to sit on the shelf. I'm not going to waste good money on, on bearings that are just going to sit there. So. Anyway, it's John Vinch Fisherman. Please like the, the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I like to help people out. I've had a couple of really good comments this week of some folks. I was able to help them get their reel back together by watching my videos. And uh, that's always good. That's gratifying to me. Um, that's how this channel got started. Thanks for watching.